Um, it's what I call the lower brain path or the higher brain path. And here's the thing. If we look at the lower brain path, I've, I'm, and again, I just remember the fear wolf and love wolf story. Which one are you feeding? Um, the fear wolf habits or seeing threats, especially when something is different from me, I might feel threatened. The whole sense of feeling separate, disconnected, anger, hate, Expecting the worst, all these are habits of the fear wolf. And the love wolf are habits of open-heartedness, connection, generating kindness, generating goodness, expecting the best, trying to catch people doing the best, you know, and, and all that. So that's the difference of the lower brain path and the higher brain path connected to that, sto that story. That in the lower brain path, that is what I call our default mode. This is what your brain is going to be doing because we have, if we lift up the neocortex, those two lower brains to the one neocortex, right? Your brain has a negative bent. It has a negative bias. It's going to be searching for what's wrong. You can't help it. It will just be doing this 24-7. So this is the default mode. And so it's automatic. And if you look over at the higher brain path, the first thing under uh, the emotional features, it's, it, it's intentional. You do this on purpose. So that's a key difference between the lower brain path and the higher brain path. And given the kinds of stress we're having that are, as I mentioned, all the layers of stress, and they're big, you know, there's this, the social unrest, there's the political unrest, there's um, climate crises, there is the pandemic has not gotten under good control yet globally. So we don't know anything predictable about it yet. It's just then we've got the personal. And the, all these layers of stress will tend to magnify the personal stress. And yes, watching the news can really magnify personal stress. So you might want to just watch less visual news and maybe read headlines or listen to the news, just make it less vivid somehow or less intense or less frequent, check in less often, that kind of thing. So under the emotional features of the, um, the lower brain, we've got, it's automatic. It is characterized by a sense of disconnection and unsafety. That's what has the brain going to fight flight. So there, emotionally, there tends to be more suspicious feeling, more hostility, more reactive, defensive, closed feeling, and keyword, negative feeling states. So if you find yourself in a negative feeling state a lot, that alone, your mood, is a signal you need to go to the be like a friend <laughs> and start doing those practices. Does that make sense? Okay. Biochemical features. So under the lower brain path, uh, path it's the flight, fight, freeze. The stress neurochemistry dominates. And we go into what's called the me brain. We become very self-absorbed. So we can't think about others too much, sadly. It drains the neurochemistry from the higher brain functions because all those resources are now being used for emergency survival. And so the brain repair switches off. Key thing to remember, okay? Got that? So the social features are social contagion of negative feeling states. Did you know that negative news travels, I think it's three to five times faster than positive news. And now you know why. I mean, the media certainly exploits it because fear sells. Why does it sell? Because of our limbic brains. You know, we're always watching for threat. We can't help it. <laughs> it's just how the default mode is. So that's going to be the priority, all that, that fear stuff. So the brain repair will switch off while the emergency mode switches on. So the social features under the lower brain path, uh, social contagion of negative feeling states, and this disrupts your energy and those of others around you, like the 
grocery store kind of, you know, or when you're riding a bus and something, a fight breaks out on the bus, oh, you better believe everybody's nervous system. Oh, this is what I wanted to remember earlier. So our nervous systems are reading one another all the time for cues of relational safety. How do we tell? It's an unconscious thing. Guess what? That vagus nerve is working hard to send signals. It's reading my nervous system is reading your nervous system. I'm looking at your eyes. So thank heavens we don't have to cover our eyes. <laughs> when we see the, the eyes crinkle up in a smile, that's a signal of safety. Guess what? With these masks, we're actually having to look into each other's eyes a lot more. That actually is a good thing. <laughs> So what else are we looking for? We're looking for voice tone. If I'm all upset and I'm talking really fast, that's a signal of unsafety, right? Because we will speed up, get louder and more intense. So we're listening for voice tone and speed. So if you want to help yourself calm down and others calm down, guess what? You can talk softer and slower and that'll be a signal, even if you're having a fight with your beloved. You can tuck your finger there and slow down your speech and lower your voice tone. So this is how our nervous systems are constantly reading one another. How else? I'm watching your gestures. If you're like this, that doesn't feel very open and approachable or welcoming. You know, if you're kind of more like this, or you're leaning forward at an interest and nodding, you know, these are things that feel more relationally safe, and that's what we're constantly reading in one another. So under the lower brain path, the social feature disrupts yours and other energy. There's disconnection. There's a lack of empathy. I don't get you. And there's unsafe communication. So the inner and outer impacts under the lower brain path, brain damage. <laughs> Fortunately, we now know that's not a life sentence. It's repairable. But it shrinks and decreases your personal capacity because you're not accessing the higher brain states, positive feeling states, and the higher brain functions so much, right? And so it will tend to devolve, what I call devolve instead of evolve. <laughs> it'll devolve yourself and society. And, you know, our society's at risk for devolving. Because who society is us, right? <laughs> the state of who the people are, how we're doing, creates the society. Under the higher brain path, we've got, that's the choice mode. And so the emotional features are, it's intentional. It promotes interconnection and safety. It's curious and welcoming instead of suspicious and hostile. Um, so it's creative, intentional, open-hearted with positive feeling states predominating. And the biochemical features under the higher brain path, it's you get the chemistry of the stress survival mode to turn off. So guess what turns on? The brain repair chemistry turns on in the higher brain path which is rest, reset, relax, and repair. And that's got to happen probably at a five to one ratio, remember, under intense stress, excessive stress as we've defined it. So then the we brain kicks in. Instead of the me brain, it's me, mine, and I can't think of anybody else's needs or anything. It's the, the we brain and we can be with ourself and with others and check in with others and it floods neurochemistry into the higher brain and brain repair switches on. So that's the biochemical features of the higher brain path. And then we've got the social features of the higher brain path, which is positive social contagion. Yay! Because <laughs> um, these are feeling states we need to have. Po social contagion of positive feeling states. And this calms not only your, oh, is that on somebody's phone or? 
So after that, let's put our finger behind our vagus nerve. <laughs> All our systems just got put on high alert. <laughs> and so it, it calms your and others' energies. There's connection, empathy, and safe communication. And in the inner and outer impacts, brain repair and growth happens. It increases your personal capacity and it evolves yourself and society. This is a perfect example of when you want to do, let me show you a real quickie. When you get a, an alert like that, put your hand. So we just had a tornado alert right during our brain retraining session. How perfect. All right, so here's an, a, a bonus I hadn't planned to teach you. Put your hand on your forehead. When you get really sh kind of shocking news or you're really upset, the brain um, drains blood from your neocortex, remember the neocortex, down to the amygdala. And the amygdala can start firing. So you put your hand here, it brings blood back up to your neocortex. So put your other hand behind your head and you're gonna put it right here where the you know, back of your skull kind of meets the top of your neck. And now you're gonna just hold that for a minute and you're gonna breathe. <laughs> you breathe in, like right now our breathing's probably a little faster than it was a few minutes ago. So find a breath that's comfortable and breathe in out slightly longer. And this brings the blood back to your higher brain. When people get shocking news, what do they do automatically? Oh my goodness, right? It's, in, it's instinctual. So we instinctually do that. This is the neuroscience of why we instinctually go, oh my goodness. So here's just what I want you to remember. The choice of the lower brain path or the higher brain path is up to you because the lower brain one is the one we we're given that we have by default. The higher brain path is the one we have to continually choose. If you have to keep choosing these, you know, interventions as, or practices a thousand times a day, nothing's wrong. The brain learns by repetition and the more you do it, the deeper the neural pathways go that establish those pathways in the brain the more you'll be able to access and remember to do it and do it well in the midst of crisis, okay? Our goal, since negative social contagion travels up to five times faster, our goal is to keep generating goodness at a ratio at five to one <laughs> for every hit of negative. Try to get the five positive feeling states. And you can do that with these practices and some of the other ones that I mentioned that you're already doing. Just keep feeding the positive and keep feeding that love wolf. And so our goal is to be like a friend, first to yourself and then to others. And remember when we're feeling, you know, anger, judgment, blame, resentment towards another, our own brain and nervous system is feeling it first. So as soon as you even notice that, switch out into self-compassion. May I know peace, <laughs> may I know safety. And even if you only do it mentally, send it out to the other person. May you know peace, may you know safety, may you know love. As much as you can remember to do it. If you forget to do it at the time, when you think of it at the end, do it whenever you think of it. Whenever you're checking in, do the SUD scale, subjective units of distress, rate yourself on zero to 10, fives in the middle. If it's over five, you need to definitely be doing these practices. Use your fake laughter <laughs> if you need to. Like on our way home, we can all be doing fake laughter to be relieved about this tornado warning today. You can do these things on the run. So the trick is just to remember to keep checking in and keep asking, which wolf am I feeding? The fear wolf or the love wolf? Which path am I on? The lower brain path or the higher brain path? And repetition, repetition, repetition is really important, okay? Thank you very much for coming out in the midst of this weather and hanging in with the tornado warnings. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you to Shelly. Thank you 